Hello again and welcome to our October edition of Quick Kit. Links to everything we mentioned will be down in the description below. This month has had some pretty juicy announcements, so grab a drink and let's get into it. DJI has just announced two brand new and incredibly unique camera systems, the Ronin 4D 6K and 8K. These new systems are looking to shake up the camera market by building in some incredible features into an all-in-one image acquisition solution. It combines the camera with an image transmission system that has a quoted 20,000 foot range, a LiDAR focusing system, internal Pro is RAW and HQ, a compact and fully featured body design, and a robust gimbal system which also has a fourth axis for removing the up and down motion that a regular three axis gimbal will have. Honestly, when DJI gave me the pre-disclosure for this, I was genuinely shocked. It looks like a device from the future and unlike anything we've really ever seen before in the industry. With how iterative camera technology has become, it's awesome to see DJI trying to shake things up a bit. And while I've seen some people loving it and some people hating it, you can't argue that it's awesome to see DJI doing something so unique. We haven't got our hands on it just yet, but we should do soon. You can pre-order exclusively from us in the UK via the link in the description below. And if you have any questions, let us know in the comments. Tilter has also announced their ecosystem of accessories for the 4D system, which could be really useful as I think some kind of easy rig style solution will probably be needed with the Ronin 4D for running the camera for long periods of time. The Action 2 is DJI's latest action camera aimed to compete with the massive range of action cameras on the market now. What makes the Action 2 different is its unique magnetic modular design and decent specifications. The camera can capture up to 4K 60p in its 4x3 mode, 4K 120p in its UHD mode while recording in H.265 and 240 frames per second when it's in Full HD mode. It features the second iteration of DJI's Rocksteady stabilization as well as a new Horizon Steady which should make for even better stabilization performance. The whole ecosystem that DJI has produced with the Action 2 looks pretty comprehensive. If you're interested in the Action 2, head over to CineD and check out their review. Sony released the long-awaited update to the a7 III earlier this month, the a7 Mark IV. We managed to check it out earlier this month for 48 hours and create a video, so check that out here if you haven't already. Long story short, it's a solid upgrade from the a7 III, which was one of the most popular hybrid cameras, but more video-focused creators will be better off looking at the slightly more expensive a7S Mark III. The second release from Sony was an updated version of the Semi 200 f2.8 G Master lens. This Mark II version has been improved in a range of ways, such as improved corner-to-corner -corner sharpness, reduced weight, improved focus breathing performance, XD linear motors for manual focusing, and the addition of a declickable iris ring. It looks awesome from what I've seen, and looks to be much better for video than the previous version. Earlier this month, Panasonic released the BS1H. This camera is essentially an S1H crammed inside of a BGH-1 body. This means you get the stellar image and sensor from the S1H inside of the BGH-1 body, which does improve some things for some productions. It's a very specific camera that could be an awesome solution to a problem that you are trying to solve, but it's not going to have the mass appeal that an S1H would have. We took a look at the camera earlier this month, so again, if you're interested in learning more, head over to the video via the link here. With Stormtrooper V-Raptor units hitting end users' hands, RED finally announced the pre-orders for the upcoming black production units of the V-Raptor 8K. We are still working on our review, which will be out soon, so make sure to subscribe to not miss that when it comes out. Pre-orders are now open on our website, so if you want to learn more, head over to it via the link down below. There have been quite a few lenses announced this month. Let's start off looking at the newly announced Lights LC. These are newly developed lenses for full-frame cinema cameras. They have been designed around LPL mount, which will have allowed lights to design them slightly differently due to the increased diameter of the mount and shorter flange depth. These lenses have been designed to have a bit more character and fall off towards the corners when compared to the more perfect performance aimed lenses like the Lights Primes and the Summer Lux Cs. Lights have also stated that the look of the bokeh is aimed to be close to the look of the M's, which have become incredibly popular for cinema and video production use over the past few years. Mica has released two new products this month, a RF to EF variable ND adapter and the 75mm T2.1 in their Super 35 cinema line. We've actually got the 75mm into test at the moment and our video looking at that as well as the 35 and the 50mm will be out next Friday, so make sure to check that out when it comes out. 
But long story short, the 75mm is pretty awesome, and it now makes the Super 35 set from Mica a pretty attractive option, especially at the incredibly affordable price point they're at. The RF to EF variable ND adapter is aimed to be an affordable option for RF users wanting an ND adapter for their camera system. This could be for people who use an ESR system or even Komodo. It supports electronic communication, so will allow image stabilization, autofocus and aperture control to work fine. It also seems to use a very similar drop-in filter system to Canon's ND filter adapter. It comes with a variable ND filter and an extra clear one out of the box. The ND filter gives you a range of 1.5 to 9 stops, which is a pretty good range, but I am interested to see what the performance is like given that it has such a low cost. I have one of these coming into tests so we can find out. Mica will also be creating a circular polarizer filter for this too. Samyang has created some popular lenses through the years, and their latest release is the 24-70 f2.8 FE. This E-mount zoom is designed as a great hybrid lens as it is supposedly parfocal, has well-controlled focus breathing, and features STM linear motors. Samyang will also be offering a cine kit, which consists of a focus gear ring, follow focus, and a tripod mount. This looks like quite a unique solution, and I'm intrigued to see how it works and how it feels. The lens is priced pretty well at just under £830, which is a bit more expensive than the 28-70 from Sigma, and is a good chunk cheaper than the full size 24-70 from Sigma. We should be getting one soon to check out, as it could be a great option for full frame E-mount camera owners. Canon has released one of the more interesting lenses I've seen in a while, the RF 5.2mm f2.8 L dual fisheye lens. This lens has been designed to be used with the EOS R5, so you can capture stereoscopic 190 degrees 8K30 or 4K 60p. Of course, there are plenty of VR options on the market now, but this is the first simple solution for a solo camera that can be used for something else other than just VR production. Each lens is captured onto the same sensor and can then be brought into either Canon's VR utility or into Premiere Pro using Canon's plugin to process. The whole process of doing this looks relatively simple, which is good for a solution like this. The design behind this is really interesting. I can't wait to get my hands on one to give it a try. Amaran released four new lighting fixtures earlier this month, two new panel lights and two new small cob fixtures. Amaran has released plenty of panel lights in the past, and the P60X and the P60C are their latest and probably greatest. The X is a bicolor fixture and the C is an RGB fixture. We've already checked them out and released a video about them, and they are awesome little fixtures, especially for their price and their size. The small cob lights are the 60X and the 60D, and they look to be awesome little travel fixtures because of their compact design and light weight. The D is daylight and the X is bicolor with a range of 2700 to 6500 Kelvin. They can be powered via mains or NPF, come in a little carry case, they include a mini Bowens mount hyper reflector, and you can even use Bowens mount modifiers with them. They look interesting and I'm intrigued to check them out when I can. Apple have just released a range of new MacBook Pros. I've owned an M1 MacBook Pro since its release and have loved it, but these new ones look like a real step up for people wanting a professional grade workstation laptop. Some of the reviews that I've seen for the Max have shown some seriously impressive video editing performance. These look to be a serious upgrade over the Intel based ones of the last generation. Our workstations are getting on a bit now, so we are still eagerly waiting for these new chips to come to a more desktop form factor, which fingers crossed comes out soon. Teradek has released two new products this month, the Spark 4K and the Wave Monitor. The Spark is a 4K zero delay wireless transmission TXRX system for AV workflows with a 500 foot range. The system is only HDMI and I think that's reflected in the price. It's actually quite a good bit cheaper than the Bolt 4K LT system. The transmitter features an internal battery that will last up to 2 hours whereas the receiver does not. Both feature a USB-C power input and the receiver also has a DC input. And this means you have redundant power options on both units, which could be really great for mission critical work. You can also connect one transmitter to up to two receivers. The Wave Monitor is a 5-in-1 streaming solution that combines encoding, network bonding, and recording all within one device. It features a 7-inch IPS 1000 nits touchscreen, the new developed flow operating system, a hot swappable dual MPF plate, and a solid range of inputs and outputs. It only has a single HDMI input, so if you want to use it on a multi-camera shoot, you would have to use some kind of switcher before this in your chain. It looks pretty well featured, and if it's OS is designed like the small HD monitors, it should be nice and easy to control. 
This is another product I'm excited to get my hands on and see how it all works and comes together. Right, let's get into our quick fire honorable mentions. Links to details about these are in the description below. Sigma released the 18-50mm f2.8 DC-DN Contemporary for APS-C, E or L mount cameras. Siriu has shown their new 50mm T2.9 1.6x full frame anamorphic lens. Rotolite announced two new lighting fixtures, the Neo3 and the AOS2. DOP Choice released their ecosystem of modifiers for the Aperture Nova P600C. Edelkrone announced the Flex Tilt Head Pro. Zekam released the IP Man Amber, which is a 5.5 inch touchscreen Android based streaming device. Mutiny has released the Bolt On Micro Record button, which uses 9 pin EXT or BNC, and the VTAP, which plugs into a DTAP for monitoring the remaining battery voltage of that device. Tiffin announced a new set of warm diffusion filters. DAT has released their new pocket wireless ecosystem. Miller released their new series of RX fluid heads. Rode released their updated desk boom arm, the PSA1 Plus, and some new accessories for the Wireless Go 2, the Flex Clip Go, and the Colors 2. Manfrotto released their new 300XM gimbal, as well as their new Move ecosystem. And FX Lion have announced their Nano 3, which is a 150 watt hour V mount battery. If you enjoyed this, please make sure you subscribe ready for next month's quick kit, and let us know what kit you've picked up this month in the comments below. And thank you so much for watching.